So the second kind of intrinsic control or auto regulation is chemical. And this is actually a lot, there's gonna be more to this um, than the myogenic control. So remember auto regulation, this is local conditions within the tissue, local control based on local conditions. So myogenic was based on blood flow, chemicals are gonna be based on what chemicals are present. Um, these are going to be typically paracrine signals autocrine some as well, right? That means on the same cell, but this is, these are local signals. It's not coming from the, the blood vessels carrying it from an endocrine organ. And this is going to be um, control of those precapillary sphincters, um, as well as vasodilation or constriction of the arterioles to get the tissues what they need, typically. So typically when you think about it as like, increased perfusion when we when we need it, like we're exercising and our skeletal muscles need it. Um, digestive system is one that also will be regulated dynamically based on when we ate last. So chemical signals are going to ask act on the precapillary sphincters. You remember those. And even if you don't, you can like think about what is that? But let me show you a picture. Um, this is what I showed last week as well. The same image. When precapillary sphincters are relaxed, that means they're open. Here are some precapillary sphincters kind of spread all throughout the arterial end of the capillary. When they're relaxed, blood can get through them because they're open. So relaxed means open. When those capillary sphincters are constricted, blood flow cannot get through here. So it's gonna pass through the middle, only one channel and not going to have perfusion. So these are closed and we have low perfusion in these tissues. This is gonna be high perfusion. And this is regulated just by the local conditions here. So chemical signals are working on those capillary sphincters, um, shutting down very, quickly and temporarily if needed, the blood flow to that region. So what would cause these to open or close or the um, arterioles to dilate or constrict? Well, let's, let's have an example. How about decreased oxygen? What might that do? That is going to result in opening. And we're talking about where, we're talking about in the, um, in the, the tissue here, locally in the tissue. So interstitial fluid, um, that's gonna affect levels locally. It's, a, it's actually, oxygen is acting as a paracrine signal. So decreased oxygen opening of capillary sphincters, pre-capillary sphincter, sorry. And what else? Vasodilation so that we can have increased blood flow to this region to give it more oxygen. Because oxygen is low, we need to increase it. Um, all cells need oxygen to survive or they will die. Similar, high carbon dioxide. It's gonna have basically the same effect. Decreased pH, um, production of hydrogen ions. We'll come back to pH regulation um, a little bit at the end of the semester. Super important thing to maintain pH for your proteins to stay happy. Um, what else? Can have some other ones that I want you to be able to like apply things um, if I've given some information. These ones being the main ones. Another one similar is increased adenosine. Um, this is uh, going to represent the production of, of and use of ATP. So if we're using a lot of ATP, we're going to need to have more blood flow in to provide more oxygen and glucose to make more ATP. Um, other metabolic acids, so that's related to pH. High metabolic acids are gonna give you a low pH. That's gonna cause um, increased blood perfusion. And one more, and I want to tell you, this is a whole lot more, like lots of stuff regulates local, local blood flow. The last one I wanna tell you is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide increasing, same thing there. Um, 
same effect. It's a powerful vasodilator. Um, it's released from the endothelial cells. This is actually how erection occurs, um, increases blood flow to the penis and clitoris as well. Other things, body temperature, um, inflammatory signal like histamines. Um, yeah. So this, and this is local, right? We don't have like um, hypoxia occurring in this individual, low oxygen in the whole body. This is like my skeletal muscle is working a lot and oxygen levels very slightly and temporarily decrease. So we're gonna increase blood flow to that skeletal muscle so that it can keep functioning. This happens all the time to maintain normal functioning.